The world is changing. The world is changing really fast. And in particular, right now, the world of energy is changing really fast too. We're doing a whole range of things differently. One of the things is we're being more energy efficient. We're doing more with less. We're producing more goods with less energy. We're changing how we source energy. We're getting energy from new places. We're getting energy from renewable places. And that's fantastic as well, because the consequence of that is its impact on CO2 emissions and global warming. But there's even more than that, because all of this new technology is arriving in a way that changes how we work. All of this new energy is being built faster. And the products that use them are being built faster. We all know that the world is changing. We can feel it. We can see it. One of the perhaps best icons for, for global change is this little device here. There's not too many of you in the audience. There will be a few that still have a flip phone. There will be nobody in this audience that's carrying a landline copper network with them. <laughs> the rate of change is extraordinary. And one of the other things that this represents is another word called convergence, which represents many technologies arriving in one place. And if we actually opened up the phone, I can go off and book a hotel. I can get my ride share. I can check my bank account. I can download an image off the web. I can tweet about this event. I can play Pokemon Go. <laughs> it might be time to stop doing that. Oh, I can make a phone call. <laughs> Who'd have imagined? If we went back to 1980 and added up every device, and if it was possible to do, worked out what it would have cost us to do, the number would come up to be a million bucks. There's that much technology on this $1,000 phone that in 1980 it would have been worth a million dollars. That's extraordinary. That's a representation of change, and that's the same level of change right now that we're seeing come to energy and move through energy. How can we be sure that the future is arriving, that we can see this rate of change? And we know from looking at all the technologies of the past that that rate of change early on goes slow, but once it starts to take, it goes fast. And the blue line on this graph shows the adoption rate of technology. And if we add all the blue line up, we make it to the yellow line. The yellow line shows us that level of consumption, that level of adoption. And with every new technology, there's always an exit. Who's got their flip phone still? Let me see the hands. There's a couple of hands. Cool. OK. That's expected. Because some of that technology carries forward. And just because we still, we've still got it today doesn't mean it'll be still here tomorrow. This century is coming faster than technology did in the last century. And also, the technology we're using is changing. How can we be sure? Let's have a look at renewable energy and where we're at today in 2017. This is a graph of real data. The blue line is the uptake of wind on the planet. Looks enormous. It's a wonderful curve. It's going up through the roof. And a bit later, solar starts to join in. And actually, if you look at that line particularly well, you'll notice that solar is going faster than wind. Wind was fast. Solar is faster. And if we start to project into the future with an ambitious view of where we expect this new technology to be, then we start to see changes. First of all, wind really seemed to be fast on that last graph, but when we put it in context to the future, we're only just getting started. And what we discover is that that use of storage, which we all know is important for renewable energy, is starting to also take root and see rapid change. Is rapid change that possible? Well, the earlier graph we showed says that's the way it always happens. It starts slow and then it goes fast. The next five years will always be faster than the last 50. That's extraordinary. How does that happen? As we produce more volume, we reduce cost. The red bar is simply the reducing cost of solar on the planet with some forecasts going forward and with the increasing volume of solar on the planet in yellow with the forecast going forward. As we reduce cost, we can increase volume. That's really important. We build things for a lower cost. We're actually approaching the point where energy may almost be free. We're not quite there yet, but free energy is something really difficult for economists to understand. What do we do with free? <laughs> what does the Reserve Bank do with free? And if we start building all this stuff cheaper, cleaner, quicker, faster, and we add it all up, 
then at the moment we've actually been growing the amount we've been spending on renewable energy. But at the same time, we've been increasing the amount we spend, which are the big columns on this graph, uh, and the amount we've been building is the same dotted lines on the side there. The more we build, the cheaper it gets, and the cheaper it gets, the more we build to the point where into the future, into 2025, we will build far more renewable capacity for far less money. We should expect global expenditure on energy to reduce. That's extraordinary. All of this stuff builds into momentum. All of this stuff builds into change to the point where by 2025, we should be expecting to build four times as much energy from renewables for around about half the cost. Next decade is going to be remarkable. 2017 is exciting. 2025 is the place when renewables really start to shine. And why is that? Because we're changing so many things all at once. Another thing we're changing is how quickly we build stuff. If we're going to build a nuclear power station, we need to get a license, we've got to get a resource, we've got to get a permit, we've got to go with the government, we've got to actually get the financing, we've got to get all the way from the start, all the way to completion. It takes around about 10 to 12 years. It takes over a decade. If we do the same with a coal plant, it takes us about six or seven years, maybe eight. If we want to build a gas-fired power station, we have to do the same thing. If I want to build a solar plant, it takes me about a year, year and a half for the same sized capacity. These things can roll out really quickly. And if you tell an investor, give me $100 million and I'll build you a coal-fired power station and you can have it in seven years to return your revenue, or give me $100 million, I'll build you a solar plant and I'll be making electricity and money for you in a year and a half. What's the investor going to do? This change is only natural now. The technology has arrived. With every entry, we need to expect an exit. We're building more and more renewable. In fact, in 2015, we built more renewables on the planet for the first time than fossil fuel. But there's another thing obvious from that graph. The fossil fuel is exiting. The second thing that's obvious from that graph, if we think about my earlier message, I can build renewables really quick, a year or two. It takes me six or eight years to build fossil fuel. So the fossil fuel on that graph was decided on six or eight years ago. In fact, the beginning of the construction that's emerging in 2016 and 17, we made decisions on in 2009 and 2010. But the renewables that's emerging here as this encompassing wave, we only made decisions on those two years ago. So when we get another two or three years into the future, that graph will be ludicrous. Now, if you ask the world, what does this renewable energy stuff look like? How is it going to grow into this new market? And if you ask those that are involved in traditional forecasting of energy markets who've had 100 years of experience in looking at these trend lines of energy forever, in this case, the Energy Information Agency from the USA, what does the future look like? You know what it looks like? A flat line in the future. But they're not doing it with a modern hat on. They're not doing it with the idea we're cheaper, quicker, cleaner. But we know from adoption curves that curves go like this. And not only is there an adoption entry, there's also an old technology exit. Where's the old technology exit on this graph? There isn't one, it's a flat line. If we look at this graph, this is from another group, the International Energy Agency, uh, and their forecasts are all strung up down the bottom here. Um, it's kind of like forecasting policy through molasses. It's kind of like trying to swim in the river with concrete boots on. All of their forecasts don't actually match up with what actually happened. So these forecasts are from 2004 up to 2009. The solid yellow line shows us the accretion of renewable energy as it actually happened past their forecast and also a dotted line that shows what the future might look like. And they've got it wrong. They got it wrong back then. Well, maybe they learnt from that because all they did was linear forecast. We know it grows logarithmically and so it should be a big steep curve. So perhaps this decade they got it right. <laughs> they got it worse. There's even more molasses. They're walking through this without a knowledge of what the future looks like. The challenge for us in building this new technology is we need to understand adoption curves. We need to understand that future comes faster than the past, and we need to understand that this is really good news for the planet if we build lots of renewables. TV sets, everybody watches one. Anybody doesn't watch one, come and give me a hand. Now, there's a couple, okay, yeah, flip phones, TV sets, okay, I get it. <laughs> TV sets are big and black and flat with silicon and chips inside, and they come out of a factory and they consume energy. And actually another thing that's big and black and flat but actually makes energy is a solar panel. 
TV sets we make about 300 million units a year. Lots of TV sets. What if we produced more solar panels than we did TV sets? Would that mean that solar panels are now just a commodity? Would that mean that we've actually moved energy from being something that you buy from a big company at the end of the road to being something that you own? It's just a commodity. This is a really exciting time where energy is being democratised. The energy that we're generating, another change, is being distributed. It doesn't come from a central power plant, it comes from our rooftop. It might come from a smaller plant nearby. That's really exciting. So if I then throw projections onto forward curves of where I think energy will go, we suddenly see the green line is renewables. It's climbing, it's growing, we're expecting it to climb. And it's going to break out. Hasn't broken out yet, let me tell you. Next decade is going to be really exciting. But in the meanwhile, there's always an exit. And the exit we can see with coal, the brown line, descending out really quickly. We're already measuring the exit of coal. The other two lines, purple is gas. We'll see that exit in another decade or so. The other line is blue, and that's oil. We'll also see that exit as well. That's really exciting when we add up all the energy that we use and we discover what share of renewables is. Because by the end of 2040, we should expect that renewables will be at least, at least 60% of global energy. The other thing that you can see in there, I said right at the start, energy efficiency is gaining. The other thing the world will do is start using less energy. And the reason for that is because we're going to be becoming increasingly mobile devices. And we're going to have to be efficient if that's what we do. But the most exciting thing, if we're ambitious, if these curves are real, if what I'm saying makes sense, if I stop pointing the laser at the audience and we get to the next slide. <laughs> we also discover that emissions are reducing as well. 60% of global energy by 2040 is really great news for the planet. I'm ambitious with my targets, but I think my targets are real. I think we need to be optimistic about the future because these targets can happen. We just need to collectively agree to make it happen. Thank you.